You know, my first introduction to the sport, uh, my parents are from Missouri. They moved down to California. We had seven kids in the family. And the only place my, my dad could take us and, and still manage us was down to the beach. So he came down actually to this beach with seven kids. I, I'm, I'm one of the younger kids. And here, it just so happened at this beach, the very best players up and down the coast, they were playing at this beach. Years ago, we would just grab players, try out for two weeks and go to Olympic Games. Uh, and I think we did that in, you know, 64. And, you know, 68, we trained a little bit. Uh, 72, we didn't qualify, but I think we did the same thing. And there was no youth, no junior development. And even the, the national team was not together. It's a very slow moving game compared to the, the game today. I remember f screening the server. You could line up in front of the server, and, and the server would crouch down, and you'd move the block the screen in front of whoever you wanted to serve it to. Oh, you also had four blockers. You could bring up a blocker from the back row. So you never had to have your weak blocker block. He could always go play defense. Well, when I first started coaching, uh, there were 24 teams that were invited to the Nationals. Uh, it wasn't a single elimination like it is today. So it was kind of like a carnival. There were games going on all over uh, the gyms. and. Um, you tried to eliminate teams and you had pool play um, and most of the coaches were frankly PE teachers that happened to have the volleyball team there were no full-time coaches in the early 70s we had a court in our backyard on on a paddle tennis court we put an eight-foot pole you know two eight-foot poles and a net across and we started to play in our backyard and that's where I really developed as a player I mean there are very very few places during that period of time where you could actually get instruction or, or uh, have an opportunity to play and compete in the sport. It just wasn't available at that time. It just wasn't available. Volleyball in the 70s was pretty popular. Uh, we had events here at UCLA where we would, uh, we would get five, 6,000 people for a tournament. X SC started to get very good in the late 70s, and that was a huge draw. And they promoted it, brought in disc jockeys to play volleyball in between games, and they promoted it on the rock stations, and uh, it was an event, just like beach volleyball is today. We also had, at that time, we had the professional league, you know, the IVA, um, and back then having crossover players like Will Chamberlain playing volleyball, and it, it was a great time. What it was is that we didn't have the 24-hour news channels and 15 different ways to get them on TV when you only had the, you know, the wild world of sports you're not going to get on TV so in other words a lot of people didn't get a chance to see what was really booming in the 70s. Well when I was about 10 11 years old my brother and I um, went down to the Manhattan Beach Open and fell in love with it. It was men and they were battling it out but it was a culture thing. I mean it was like these men were warriors. I'll, I mean, I'll never forget. I fell in love from that moment. Thought it was the most amazing thing and, and just can remember being at the tournament. We would spend the night the night before so we'd have good seats. There were no bleachers back then, no sponsors. It was, it was so cool and I, and I know at that moment is, that's when we fell in love with beach volleyball. The birth of the Manhattan Beach Tournament, uh, the, the Manhattan Open, and uh, just the, it's, it, it developed into that cult lifestyle, a cult following, the, uh, that, they, that volleyball players were to a, to a certain degree invincible, that they could, uh, they could stay out all hours and, and still win the, uh, a beach tournament. And, yeah, I don't know how much that's changed, but uh, there's definitely uh, volleyball, beach volleyball in particular, um, and, you know, and it bled into the, in the indoor game, definitely. It was a uh, very enjoy life and, and free living and, and volleyball was the perfect means, the sport, to provide that, that outlet. Everybody is so gregarious about, uh, no matter if you were their opponents or, or, you know, teammates, after you got through playing, they always had a feed, a feast. We got together and, and we would go over to, especially we were down playing in Berkeley, we'd go up in the hills and after we got through and they'd have spaghetti and brownies and all that and sometimes they'd lace it with marijuana and sometimes they wouldn't and you got out of there sometimes you had a buzz like you never believed. What we didn't have was credibility and that 
you, it was seen as you wanted to participate, but it was seen as it's just a little hobby the girls do. You know, play and you'll move on. And, and it's now a profession and people are, livelihood is through this sport. And that wasn't the case 30 years ago.